I think there's a secularization that's happening in the world that we haven't had to face before. Uh, in the past, there's been a general respect for faith. There's been a general respect for churches. And now we're seeing that faith and churches are starting to be left to the side. And we see this rise among the youth of what they call the nuns, those who are saying they don't have any religious affiliation. Now, there are still a lot of people who claim to be spiritual, but without a tie to a particular church. But I think as we look at that, we have to remember that at the same time we're seeing this secularization, we're seeing people who are choosing to not have a religious affiliation, at the same time we're seeing a rise in depression, in anxiety, in social problems, the hatred that fills the internet and fills social media. And so to me it seems very clear that some of these problems that are growing may be connected to the fact that people are choosing to not have faith and choosing to not be religious in their lives. I think there's a connection there. And the sooner we can make that better. Now, all churches are struggling to keep their youth and their young single adults. Actually, our church is doing much better than many churches. But all churches are getting hit by this wave, this tidal wave of secularization. And uh, so I'm grateful for the fact that we have strong youth who are still making the choice to stay in the church, to stay in the faith, and that as they do leave, uh, some people say, oh, we're losing all the youth in the church. And in actuality, the numbers that the church is looking at, we're not losing that many more than have been lost in any generation. If you think back to when you were growing up, some of the young people you knew may, not lo may no longer be participating with the church. That's been something that's happened ever since Jesus Christ has ever taught his gospel. There are people who have walked away. Um, even when Christ fed the thousands and then he wanted to teach them and they said, no, we don't want a lecture, we just want food. And then when he didn't give them the food, then they walked away. This has always been something that we have dealt with in church history. We saw people struggle in New York. We saw people struggle and leave the church in Kirtland, in Missouri. We saw it happen in Nauvoo. We've seen it happen throughout church history. So I don't think this is a time to be discouraged because we see some people leaving. There have always been those who have used their agency to leave. The difference is that now it's so public. It's so loud. People used to just step away from the church. Now, with social media, they make a big production out of it. And they have to let everybody know. So then it seems like, oh my gosh, all the youth are leaving, all the young adults are leaving. But that's not necessarily the case. And I think we have to remember that social media and the internet amplify what's going on. It may indicate that there's an issue but the social media amplifies that issue and we've got to be careful to realize that the truth is the majority of the youth are staying in the church, the majority of the young single adults are staying in the church and there are faithful, wonderful young people who are making a very difficult choice. There was a day where faith was just the choice that everybody made. And now, as young people choose faith, they're having to make a very conscious decision, and they're having to choose an uphill climb. I heard some people say, oh, Latter-day Saints are mindless sheep who are following their prophet. And I said, since when do mindless sheep go uphill? Mindless sheep go downhill. And everything that the prophet is asking of us, everything that God and Jesus are asking of us, are taking us uphill. 
But everywhere I go, I see courageous, wonderful, valiant youth who are choosing to go uphill. And that fills me with hope for the future.